Exodus 15, 26. If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus 23, 25-26 So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Deuteronomy 7, 15 And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt which you have known, but will lay them on all those that hate you. Psalms 103, 2-5 Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with the loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Psalms 147 and 3 He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Proverbs 3, 7 and 8 Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. I will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Psalms 147 and 3 He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Jeremiah 30 and 17 For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Jeremiah 33 and 6 Behold, I will bring it health and cure. I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Psalm 107, 17-22 Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their souls abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of the men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and declare his word with rejoicing. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23 My son, give attention to my words, incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Isaiah 55:11 so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Numbers 23 and 19 God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall not make it good? Second Chronicles 6 and 14 And said, O Lord God of Israel, 
There is no God like thee in heaven, nor in earth, which keepeth covenant, and showeth mercy unto thy servants, that walk before thee with all their heart. Malachi 3 and 6 For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Exodus 12, 13 Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Psalms 91, 9-10 because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come nigh to your dwelling. Isaiah 53, 4-5 and 10 Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering of sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Isaiah 61, 1-2 The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16. For thus says the Lord God, Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day, and I will bring them out from the people, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys, and in all the inhabited places of the country. What will God do to and for his flock? I will feed them in good pasture, and their fold shall be on the high mountains of Israel. There they shall lie down in the good fold and feed in rich pastures on the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away, bind up the broken, and strengthen what was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong, and feed them in judgment. Psalms 30, 1 through 4. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up, and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. Psalms 30 and 2 O Lord, my God, I cried unto Thee, and Thou hast healed me. Nehemiah 8 and 10 Then He said unto them, Go your way, Eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 40 and 31 But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Joel 3 and 10 Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Psalms 41 and 3 The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. Deuteronomy 30, 19-20 I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest live and dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob to give them Leviticus 26 3 and 9 if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them for I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you Psalm 118 and 17 I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Hosea 13 and 14 I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plague. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Amos 5, 4 through 6 for thus saith the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me and live. But do not seek Bethel, nor enter Gilgal, nor pass over Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, with no one to quench it in Bethel. Exodus 20 and 12. Honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God has given thee. Deuteronomy 5 and 33. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded, that you may live, and that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Deuteronomy 11 and 9 And that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swore to give your fathers to them and their descendants a land flowing with milk and honey. Deuteronomy 11 and 22 That your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them like the days of the heavens above the earth. Isaiah 46 and 4 Even to your old men I am he, and even to the gray hair I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. 1 Chronicles 29 and 28 And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon his son reigned in his stead. Job 5 and 26 Thou shalt come to thy grave 
in a full age, like as a shock of corn cometh in his season. Psalms 90 and 10 The days of your years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Proverbs 3, 1 through 2 My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Proverbs 9 and 11 For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Ecclesiastes 7 and 17 be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Isaiah 65 and 22 And they shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. For as the days of the tree are the days of my people, mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Psalm 145, 8-9 through nine. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Genesis 20 and 17 So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bear children. Second Chronicles 30 and 20. The Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. Second Kings 20 and 5. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Psalms 105 and 37 He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribe. Isaiah 38, 4 through 10, and 17 through 22 And the word of the Lord came unto Isaiah, saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Surely I will add to your days fifteen years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow on the sundial, which has gone down with the sun on the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backwards. So the sun returned ten degrees on the dial by which it had gone down. This is the writing of Hezekiah king of Judah, when he had been sick and had recovered from his sickness. I said, in the prime of my life, I shall go to the gates of Sheol. I am deprived of the remainder of my years. Indeed, it was for my own peace that I had been in great bitterness. But you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you, death cannot praise you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your truth. The living, the living man, he shall praise you, as I do this day. The Father shall make known your truth to the children. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing my song with stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. Now Isaiah had said, Let them take a lump of figs and apply it 
as a poultice on the boil, and he shall recover. And Hezekiah had said, What is this sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? Isaiah 58 and 8 Then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Malachi 4 and 2 But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. Job 33, 9-28 Man is also chastened with pain on his bed and with strong pain in many of his bones, so that his life abhors bread and his soul succulent food. His flesh wastes away from sight and his bones stick out, which once were not seen. Yes, his soul draws near the pit and his life to the executioners. If there is a messenger for him, a mediator, one among a thousand, to show man his uprightness, then he is gracious to him and says, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be young like a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray to God, and he will delight in him. He shall see his face with joy, for he restores to man his righteousness. Then Aaron took it as Moses commanded, and ran into the midst of the assembly. And already the plague had begun among the people. So we put in the incense and made atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, so the plague was stopped. Proverbs 15 and 30 The light of the eyes rejoiced the heart, and a good report makes the bones healthy. Proverbs 16 and 24 Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Proverbs 17 and 22 a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Psalms 41, 1 through 3 and 8 through 11. Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he will be blessed on the earth. You will not deliver him to the wills of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. He will sustain him on his sick bed. An evil disease, they say, clings to him. And now that he lies down, he will rise no more. Even my own familiar friends, in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up that I may repay them. But this I know, that you are well pleased with me, because my enemy does not triumph over me. Psalms 43 and 5 Why art thou downcast, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Psalms 42, 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Psalms 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Isaiah 32, 3-4 The eyes of them who see will not be dim, and the ears of those who hear will listen. Also, the heart of the rash will understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammering will be ready to speak plainly. 
Isaiah 35, 5-6 Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For water shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. Isaiah 57, 17 through 18. For the iniquity of his covetousness, I was angry and struck him. I hid and was angry, and he went on backsliding in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will also lead him and restore comfort to him and to his mourners. Job 37 and 23 Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and in plenty of justice. He will not afflict. Psalm 67 and 2 That thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving help among all nations. Jeremiah 30, 15-17 why do you cry about your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable because of the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased. Therefore, all those who devour you shall be devoured, and all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Those who plunder you shall become plunder, and all who prey upon you I will make a prey, for I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord, because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion, no one seeks her. Jeremiah 33 and 6 Behold, I will bring it health and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. Ezekiel 37, 5-14 Thus says the Lord God, to these bones. Surely I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will put sinew on you, and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinew and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. So he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. God is the God of your life. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves, I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Ezekiel 47, 6-9 He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned there, along the bank of the river, there were very many trees on one side and the other. Then he said to me, This water flows towards the eastern region goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. 
and it shall be that everything that moves, wherever the rivers go, will live. There will be a great multitude of fish, because these waters go there, for they will be healed, and everything will live wherever the river goes. James 5, 13-16 Is there anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sin, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses one to another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Mark 9, 23 And Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Hebrews 13 and 8 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 3 John 1, 2 Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. James 1, 17 Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Romans 8, 11. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. 1 Thessalonians 5:23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. John 4, 50. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son liveth. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. Matthew 9, 2 Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying in a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Matthew 8, 13 Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Mark 5, 34 And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Mark 5, 35 through 36. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Matthew 9, 28 through 29. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. Matthew 15, 28. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. 
let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Luke 17 and 19 And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Mark 10, 52 Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Acts 4, 8-10 and in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet, and he leaped and walked. Mark 11, 22 to 24. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. 1 John 5, 14-15 And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Hebrews 4, 16 Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 10 and 22 Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water John 15 and 7 if ye abide in me and my word abides in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you Matthew 18 19 again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Philippians 2, 8 through 10. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth. John 14, 13 through 14. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 16, 23 through 24. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall have received, that your joy may be full. Acts 3 and 16. And his name through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. John 16, 
John 14, 12 through 14. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Matthew 4, 23-24 And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manners of sickness, and all manner of disease among the people. Luke 4, 16-19 and 21 And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Mark 16, 15 through 18. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Matthew 10, 1. And when he had called his disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Matthew 8, 17 That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. 1 Peter 2, 24 who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. Galatians 3, 13 through 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangs on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Acts 10, 38 How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healed all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Isaiah 10, 27 It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from his shoulder and his yoke from his neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. 1 John 3, 8 He that committeth sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Matthew 8, 
14 through 16. Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his mother's wife lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose and served them. When evil was come, they brought to him many that were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all that were sick. Matthew 4, 23 through 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were possessed with demons, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. Matthew 12, 15 But while Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Matthew 14, 14 And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion for them, and healed their sick, Matthew 14, 35-36 When the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all that surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick, and begged that they might only touch the hem of his garments. And many as touched it were made perfectly well. Matthew 15, 30-31 and great multitudes came to him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them, insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, and the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Mark 6 53 through 56. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret, and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him, and ran through the whole region round about, and began to carry about in beds those that were sick, where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered, into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were but the border of his garments. As many as touched him were made whole. Mark 7, 37 And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Mark 9, 11. And when the multitude knew it, they followed him, and he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who need healing. Luke 4, 40. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Luke 6, 17 through 19. And he came down to them and stood in the plain, and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem, and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went out virtue out of him, and healed them all. Matthew 8, 1-4 When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. 
Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing to be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Romans 4, 17, 19 through 21. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him, whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and calleth those things that be not as though they were. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body dead when he was about a hundred years old, and neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that he had promised he was able to deliver. Romans 8, 32 And he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? James 1, 17 Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Matthew 7, 11. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask? 2 Peter 1, 3-4 As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him, who calleth us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. John 10.10 10, The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Mark 9, 54. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. John 1, 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. John 6, 33 through 35. For the bread of God is he that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. John 11:25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me Though he may be dead, yet shall he live. Hebrews 2, 9, 14 through 15. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Insomuch, then, as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Romans 8 and 2 For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Colossians 1, 12 through 14 Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of life who hath delivered us from the power of darkness 
and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Ephesians 1, 16 through 23. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. James 4 and 7 Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Revelation 12 and 11 And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their life unto death. Colossians 2, 10 and 15, And we are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, and have spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them, openly triumphing over them in it. Mark 9 and 2, Then, he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Hebrews 10 and 23 Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 11 11 By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Hebrews 10, 35-36 Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that, after ye have done the will of God, he might receive the promise. 1 Timothy 6 and 12 Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Hebrews 11, 6 But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 1 John 5, 4 through 5. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Matthew 9, 27. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And their eyes were open. And Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knoweth. Philippians 2.27 For indeed he was sick almost unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Matthew 15, 22 and 28 And behold, a woman of Canaan came from the region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is your faith. 
let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Luke 13 and 16 So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it for eighteen years, be loosed from this bond of, on the Sabbath? Luke 10 and 19 Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Acts 6 and 8 And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Acts 8, 6 through 7. And people, with one accord, gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, and that were lame were healed. Acts 9, 33 through 34. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years, and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ make thee whole. Arise, make thy bed. And he arose immediately. Acts 14, 8 through 10. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Acts 19, 11 through 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Acts 4, 29-31 Now, Lord, look on their threats, and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out their hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and there were all filled in that place with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Acts 10 and 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 2 Timothy 4 and 18 And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Romans 8, 2, and 11. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life unto your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. 1 Corinthians 11, 28 through 31. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in any unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. 1 Corinthians 12, 7-11 But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. 
to another the word of knowledge of the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Colossians 1 and 12 Give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Hebrews 12, 12 through 13. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Romans 8, 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Revelation 21 and 4 And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Revelation 22, 1 through 2 And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come. Whosoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. What I'm about to read are the 37 miracles of Jesus recorded in the Bible. We'll be reading them in chronological order. These miracles include miracles of healing, of restoration, of provision, and intervention. If Jesus could do these miracles back then, he can do the same today. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word says, I am God, I change not. Whatever he has done in the past, he can do today. He has touched people down through the ages, and he can touch you even now. Listen with expectation, knowing that God is able. John 2, 1 through 11, Jesus turning the water into wine. And the third day, there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there was set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse 
but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. John 4, 43-54 Jesus heals an official son. Now, after two days, he departed thence and went into Galilee, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. Then, when he was come into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast. They also went to the feast. So Jesus came again into Canaan Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and believed him and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Luke 4, 31-36 And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath day. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried with a loud voice, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him, and hurt him not. And they were all amazed, and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. Matthew 8, 14-15 Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Matthew 8, 16-17 Jesus heals many sick at evening. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Luke 5, 1 through 11, the first miraculous catch of fish. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down 
and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let your nets down for a draw. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they would come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fish which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ship to land, they forsook all and followed him. Matthew 8, 1 through 4. Jesus cleanses a man with leprosy. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Matthew 8, 5 through 13. This is the eighth miracle that Jesus did. He healed the centurion's servant. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say unto this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Matthew 9, 1 through 8. Jesus heals a paralytic. This is the ninth miracle that Jesus did. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought a man unto him sick of the palsy, lying in a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes and Pharisees said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. And that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, 
Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy house. And he arose and departed to his house. And when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Matthew 12, 9-14 This is the tenth miracle that Jesus did. He heals a man with a withered hand. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue, and behold, there was a man which had a hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into the pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold of it and lift it out? How much more is this man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a counsel against him, how they might destroy him. Luke 7, 11 through 17. This is the eleventh miracle that Jesus did. He raises a widow's son in the city of Nain. And it came to pass the day after that he went into the city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now, when he came nigh to the gates of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bear, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God had visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the regions round the valley. Matthew 8, 23-27 This is the twelfth miracle of Jesus. He calmed the storm. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep, and his disciples came unto him, and woke him, and saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said to them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, and rebuked the wind and the waves and the sea. And there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Matthew 8, 28-33 This is the thirteenth miracle of Jesus. He cast the demons into the herd of the pigs. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them, a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go in the way into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. 
And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled and went their way into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devil. Mark 5, 25 through 34. This is the 14th miracle of Jesus. He heals a woman with the issue of blood. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in and pressed behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude following thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth and he said unto her daughter thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague Matthew 9 18 through 26. This is the 15th miracle of Jesus. He raised the daughter of Jairus to life. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hands upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame thereof went abroad into all that land. Matthew 9, 27 through 31. This is the 16th miracle of Jesus. He heals two blind men. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came into him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame into all the country. Matthew 9, 32-34 This is the seventeenth miracle of Jesus, and he heals a man unable to speak. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. When the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, he casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. John 5, 1 through 15. This is the 18th miracle of Jesus as he heals the invalid at Bethesda. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, 
which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whoso then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. A certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now a long time in this case, and he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him, That was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is this which said this unto thee? Take up thy bed and walk. And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple, and saith unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. The man departed, and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Matthew 14, 13 through 21. This is the 19th miracle that Jesus did when he fed the 5,000. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the city. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them. And he healed their sick. And when it was even, his disciples came unto him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass, and took the five loaves and two fishes. Looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake, and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Matthew 14, 22-33 This is the twentieth miracle that Jesus did when he walked on the water. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship, and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out in fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bids me come unto thee under the water. And he said, Come. 
And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased, and they were in the ship and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Matthew 14, 34-36 This is the 21st miracle of Jesus when he healed many sick at Gennesaret. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Matthew 15, 21 through 28. This is the 22nd miracle of Jesus. And he heals a Gentile woman's demon-possessed daughter. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, True, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from her master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Mark 7, 31-37 This is the 23rd miracle of Jesus. He heals a deaf and dumb man. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came into the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech. And they besought him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude, put his fingers into his ears, and he spit, and touched his tongue, and looked up to heaven. He sighed, and said unto him, Epaphrathah, that is, be open. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plainly, and he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more, a great deal, they published it, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Matthew 15, 32-39 This is the 24th miracle of Jesus. He feeds the 4,000. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days, and have nothing to eat, and I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, when should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus said unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven, and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down in the grass. And he took the seven loaves, 
and the fishes, and gave thanks, and brake them, and gave them to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were filled, and they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. And they that did eat were four thousand men, besides women and children. And he sent away the multitude, and took ship, and came into the coast of Magdala. Mark 8, 22-26 This is the 25th miracle of Jesus. Jesus heals a blind man at Bethesda. And he came to Bethesda, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, and asked him if he saw aught, and he looked up, and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hand again upon his eyes, and made him look up. And he was restored, and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. John 9, 1-12 This is the 26th miracle of Jesus. He heals a blind man born blind. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was born blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither had his parents sinned, nor this man sinned, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work, as long as I am in the world. I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Shalom, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing the neighbors therefore and they that were before him had seen him that he was blind said is not he that sat and begged some said this is he others said he is like him but he said i am he therefore said they unto him how are thine eyes open and he answered and said a man that is called jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me go to the pool of shalom and wash and i went and washed and i received my sight and they said unto him where is he he said i know not matthew 17 14 through 20 jesus heals a boy with a demon this is the 27th miracle of jesus and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft time he falleth into the fire, and oft time into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye shall have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Matthew 17, 24-27 
This is the 28th miracle of Jesus, the miraculous temple tax in the fish's mouth. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? He said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children? Or of strangers? Peter said unto him, Of strangers. Jesus said unto him, Then are the children free, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them. Go thou to the sea, cast in hook, and take up the fish that cometh first. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take, given to them for me and thee. Luke 11, 14 through 23. This is the 29th miracle of Jesus. He heals a blind and mute demoniac. And he was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. And it came to pass when the devil was gone out. The dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, He cast out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his place, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusteth, and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. Luke 13, 10 through 17. This is the thirtieth miracle of Jesus, and he heals a crippled woman. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmities. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, not on the Sabbath. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his donkey from the stall, and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Luke 14, 1-6 This is the 31st miracle of Jesus. He heals a man with dropsy on the Sabbath. And it came to pass, as he went into the house of one of the chief priests to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, 
Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go and answered them saying, Which of you have a donkey or an ox fall in the middle of it? And will not straightly pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him again to these things. Luke 17, 11 through 19. This is the 32nd miracle of Jesus. And Jesus cleanses the ten lepers. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell on his face at the feet of Jesus, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were not ten lepers cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. John 11, 1 through 45. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, which is the 33rd miracle of Jesus. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then, after that, said he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou hither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things he said, and after that, he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleeps, he shall do well. Howbeit, Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sake that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. And when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem about fifteen furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, Whatsoever thou ask of God, 
God will give it to you. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth to the grave to weep there. Then Mary was come where Jesus was, and saw him, and she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto the Lord, Lord, by this time he stinketh for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou wouldst see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the thing which Jesus did believed on him. Matthew 20, 29-34 This is the 34th miracle Jesus performed, and he restores the sight to Bartimaeus. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the way, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should have hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I do unto thee? They said unto him, Lord, that our sight may be open and our eyes might see. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Matthew 21, 18 through 22. This is the 35th miracle that Jesus performed when he withers the fig tree. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered, and when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, 
Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward for evermore. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also ye shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done. In all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe ye shall receive. Luke 22, 50-51 This is the 36th miracle that Jesus did, and he heals a servant's severed ear. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. John 21, 4 through 11. This is the 37th miracle recorded in the Gospels that Jesus performed. And it's the second miraculous catch of fish. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered him and said, No. He said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes that were in the net. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher coat on him, for he was naked, and did cast himself in the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it were two hundred cubits dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, fish laid thereon, and bread. And Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land, full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many yet was not the net broken. In John 21, 24-25, this is recorded about Jesus. This is the disciple which testifies of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, and which if they should be written every one I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. This concludes the 37 miracles that Jesus performed that are recorded in the Gospels in the Bible. These are powerful examples of what Jesus was able to do while he was on this earth. These are an encouragement to you and I, knowing that the same God who was here on earth that was cloaked in flesh, named Jesus, is still able to do these great and mighty miracles, even in our lives, for all those that believe and ask. So as we conclude this time together, I would encourage you to seek the Lord and to believe and see what God will do in your life.